the Victorians were a paradoxical group of people. They didn't know themselves what they were about. And for us to be able to describe the word Victorian means that you have towards that idea of Victorian. Whereas I would say that they are so paradoxical that you can call them both confused and purposeful. We're involved in some kind of secrecy about this era. We're not allowed to look directly at it. And I think this is what the artists are doing. They're looking at it from different angles. Some look as if they might be imitating the era, but they're probably redefining it and recapturing it in certain terms. That whole term, Victorian, still impinges itself in a very physical way. Um, for, for, for anyone living in an urban centre in Britain, really, there, there's, there's still a lot of evidence of the, of the Victorians around. I've used the Morris designs as a kind of trellis on which to hang other images and other layers of paint. It was only because I was living very close to um, William Morris's house in Walthamstow that I, I stumbled across a lot of his wallpaper designs. But there, there was something very um, potent there, obviously, that I felt could be woven in to the the, the paintings. Um, the thing about their formality gives you the sense of uh, nature being restrained into a formal, um, almost geometric design. Morris was reacting against the death of the individual, uh, certainly in the crafts. His answer to that was to get rid of the whole construct of industrial society and try and return us to a medieval society such as that which he proposed in News From Nowhere. I took the notion of this uh, novel that Morris wrote, which is a kind of river journey, but also a journey through time, forward, looking forward um, from his point in history and tried to make a painting that reflected the, the kind of serpentine structure of the, of the journey he makes. I think it is useful at times to step back and try and take a longer view of how what, trying to see how what you do relates to things done um, in the past. I live and work in a, in a, in a, a, a Victorian terrace house. Uh, knocked about and altered in various ways and added to. But it's, it's still all there as a sort of structure um, through which you move. I think there were people having to deal with um, a society that was changing very fast around them. And I think we have that in common with them. And you see evidence that in the kind of art that was being made to some extent. Um, and there were also people that were very keen on um, trying to reassess or mythologize their own past. The myth of the medieval is very central to a lot of their work. What we term pre-Raphaelite um, is actually more complex. Um, the movement started in the mid-19th century with um, paintings by Ford Maddox Brown and Millet and Arthur Hughes, often dealing with contemporary subjects of the day, people in contemporary dress. But the, there was a change of emphasis about 10 years later in the 1860s when new artists become uh, more prominent, people like Burne Jones and Rossetti. And the, the whole mood of Pirafelite art changes as well because the works become much more to do with fantasy and dream. And it's these images of, particularly of women, sort of femme fatale Pirafelite women which um, to the public are now associated with pre-Raphaelite art, but in fact it's almost uh, the opposite of what the early 
Pre-Raphaelites set about to do, what their ideals were. Um, they set about to imitate what they saw very precisely, to imitate, go back to nature and paint things they could actually see in front of them. And so we have a complete swing of emphasis with these sort of paintings, which are about dream and mythology. Um, and images of women are very much the forefront.